The first thing I want to say is APT Shmay, Shmay PT, APT Shmay PT um, by Sherry DeGrippo, age 44. So um, I'm here to hype you guys up for the first SleuthCon um, because obviously we all love CyberWarCon. The content is amazing. Um, and I think that we can do an equivalent for crimes, right? So um, I want to give a disclaimer. Some of the things I say are not my true beliefs and are things that I'm just saying in this venue to um, convince you to follow me down this rabbit hole. I can never pick Crimeware over APT or APT over Crimeware. It's like picking your favorite child. Every single one of my researchers is my favorite child. I love them all equally. Um, I haze them all equally. <laughs> and they're all very important to me. But today, APT sucks and Crimeware is the best. <laughs> Um, so I'll give you a quick introduction of who I am. Um, I've been in InfoSec for 18 years. I started out at the government and quickly found that I need way more money than that. <laughs> Crimeware. Um, and so I went to vendors uh, to pay me the cash. Some of you are on red team. Some of you are on blue team. I'm on green team. We make the money. <laughs> so that's what my focus is, is um, essentially creating proof point products that protect email, network, and cloud. Um, I run our research team. So APT reports to me and Crimeware reports to me, and they're constantly hugging and kissing each other, and I'm like, get off each other, guys, stop. <laughs> um, but we take that stuff really seriously, and, and interestingly, if you're familiar with Proofpoint's history at all, we kind of started as a spam company, um, but we've made our name in Crimeware, and we're slowly, like, really crawling up the public APT releases. That's something that we didn't have a great capability around for several years until the team we have today. If you were at CyberWorkCon yesterday, you saw Mike Raji talk about Leviathan, which I named. <laughs> I didn't discover it. But the researcher who discovered it said he didn't care what it was called and that he'd let his boss name it. So um, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. If you're ever in Atlanta, please say hello. My favorite protocol is DNS. Anyone else's favorite protocol, DNS? <laughs> Least favorite protocol, DNS? OK. Um, I have a screenshot collection that's really big. And we're going to look at some of those screenshots today. Um, so why are we here? Because Crimeware is better than APT. It's more advanced. It's more persistent. It's more threat. Um, it's just cooler. Like, I specialize in weird stuff. And so my team knows, and people in the community know, if you find some weird shit, give it to Sherrod. Crimeware is weirder shit. Like, it just really is weirder. And so that's one of the things that attracts me to it is it's more fun. It's more cool. It has weirder stuff. Like, we saw tons of Queen Elizabeth death lures, and APT guys aren't doing that. That's crime. Um, so is anyone here a threat actor? <laughs> I don't mean emotionally. I mean from a threat landscape, technical cyber perspective. Silas? I don't disqualify him at all. Matt, Matt, oh, if you're a threat actor, get out. We glorify defenders here. Um, OK, so that's something else I want to put on the agenda for all of you is that, you know, I won't name the vendors like CrowdStrike that make these action figures and have these, like, stickers about the actors and all that stuff. I think it's funny, and I think we should ridicule them, but I never think we should glorify the threat actors. We should be impressed by their tactics, and we should give them credit for that, and we should never, you know, get off our toes on it. But I don't like the, I don't like getting on my knees for the threat actors. Like, I'm here for the defenders. I'm here for people that shut them down. And we can make fun of them, and we can learn about them, but I never want anyone to think that I'm glorifying an APT or a crime actor, because um, <laughs> TAs are scum. OK, so um, I want to give just a quick intro to how this came about. John Holquist literally was like, do you know, do you know any cybercrime people? <laughs> and I was like, John, do you know what my job is? <laughs> he does. Um, so I was like, yeah. And I started to learn over time that John Holquist kind of sees cybercrime as this weird exotic land that he <laughs> has not spent a lot of time in. And I was like, yeah. He's like, do you think you could get some cybercrime people to come to a conference? <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I, I know people like that. Um, and so this is kind of, this is literally, <laughs> that's literally how it started September 2nd. Hey, -oh. 
um, I have an idea, you know, day after cyber, uh, after cyber war con we want to do. And I said, crime brunch, ha, 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 ha. And all of you came to that. So that's how it started. How's it going? We're doing mimosas. I am out of control. I feel like Bridezilla. I, <laughs> you are the Bridezilla of my dreams. I literally told my whole team in chat when he sent me this, I said, you guys, John Holquist, who I adore, who I aspire to be like, who I've watched in the community for years, John Holquist just told me he feels like Bridezilla. <laughs> And my team was like, what? Yes, yes. And so, you know, I said, of course, ride the dragon. Um, so let's talk crimeware. I thank all of you for coming here and just filling yourself with crimeware love. Um, here's what I love. So I'm going to go through a couple lures because that's sort of my bread and butter. Um, this one says, I'm emailing you about the horrible treatment that I received with my wife at your store. So a couple of things about this really cool lure I want you to pick out because this is classic, classic crimeware. APT is not going to do this at this scale. It's the other thing with, with Crimeware, right, is we got the big volumes, right? The APT campaign's three messages. <laughs> Emotet's a million a day, all right? So um, what I love about this is that, does anyone know how many times the Salesforce database has been breached? Way too many. <laughs> it's out there if you want it. So the crime guys know that, and they download those data breaches, not necessarily for the cred access, but for the social engineering capability. And this is a beautifully crafted lore because it has the person's first and last full name. It has where they work and the city that they work in, and it's all automated. That's the beautiful thing, I think, about Crimeware is that they're able to create really customized social engineering lures at fucking scale. <laughs> We don't see that kind of scale with APT. Like the crimeware guys will pump out 100,000 messages for a single campaign to a single region and then do it again for the next region an hour later. The volumes in crimeware are massive and the bigger the volume, the more data and telemetry that we have to look at. So this is a fun one. Okay, does anyone watch what I call Hot D? House of the Dragon, Hot D. So um, this is an awesome uh, lore about Game of Thrones that came out back around when um, season seven was airing on HBO. And if you guys remember, HBO got breached and they stole um, advanced copies of Game of Thrones episodes. And this was literally like three days after that breach happened, we started getting these lures. That's the other thing. As we learned yesterday, those APT actors are not timely on the news cycle. They're talking about stuff from like a year ago. Crimeware, they're on it. They read the paper in the morning. Um, but this one's really cool because it says, um, area, oh, spoiler alert, area kills Littlefinger, White Walkers attack the wall, Daenerys has a have sexual relationship with Jon Snow. Um, and so they're really pumping you up to obviously click the malicious document in the attachment and enable macros and get a banking trojan. But Crimeware will come at you with your favorite media. They've used Justin Bieber tickets. They've used The Weeknd tickets. They've used Squid Game. They did a lore that was very similar to this that said you can be an extra in Squid Game if you sign up on this spreadsheet. <laughs> that was ransomware, I think. Um, so the other thing I love about the um, crime or landscape is that they are so focused on defeating security tools, and they love leveraging branding, whether it's McAfee, Norton, Kaspersky in the old days, um, or any of the vendors that, like myself, that you pay money to, they love it. They love leveraging a security logo to make people think that it's secure. And this is a great one because it's a classic malicious document. It's a classic malicious word document. You click to enable macros, and all of the people receiving this think they're being more secure by doing it. Oops. And so this is another one that I love. It's um, Royal Bank of Canada, and it says you have to enable um, RSA. So you have to enable MFA, essentially. Crimeware knows what we do to secure ourselves, and they actually really love to leverage that and turn it against us. They want to focus on making sure that people see branding, names, and things that they're familiar with, because that enables them to be better um, success. Like, they track metrics on how successful they are. We don't see, in my experience, APTs doing that. 
The crime war guys will actually keep metrics on how effective their different lures are. If Game of Thrones doesn't work, they're going to use Sex in the City. They're going to use another show until they get the click-through metrics that they want, and they track those really, really carefully. So finally, this is one of my... Um, no, there's one more after this. This is one of my favorite ones that says, find attached our new price list for group management. We have been forced to increase tariffs by 4% on cow milk cheeses. Goat cheese prices remain the same. <laughs> so when I said I specialize in weird stuff, this is what I mean. My team immediately came to me and was like, I think we're on a meeting, and they said, Cher, do you want to see the cheese lore? <laughs> I said, yes, I do want to see the cheese lore. Please show it to me. And what we learned is that, hey, crimeware, nothing is sacred. They will take your cheese. <laughs> so this is my, this is my favorite favorite. Um, my name is Vincent Capucci. I'm a, I'm a senior partner at Inswile and Capucci LLP. Your spouse has contracted me to prepare the divorce papers. <laughs> Here's the first draft. Please contact me as soon as possible. So what's interesting about this first is that there's nothing personalized about it, and so I'll tell you why that is in a moment. Second, this is a real law firm in New York. This is their real logo and font. That's their, a real person, and that's their real phone number. Crimeware wants to get you in that dock, and they don't care how many people, who and when. And here's the thing I always say to people. Raise your hand if you would click on this. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Raise your hand if you know someone who would click on this. <laughs> oh, okay. You get my point. And the other thing I always point out about this, you know, people get pretty polarized with some of the lures and, and social engineering that we work on, and they say, I'd never click on that, as you all just did. Okay. Um, but when I say Brad and Angelina, do you know if they're married or divorced? Do you know who Brad and Angelina are? <laughs> that sold millions of copies of magazines. People are interested in divorce. People are interested in other people's dirty laundry. And I'll tell you what, if I could just look at divorce papers and settlements all day, that sounds fun. <laughs> so I think that it's important to realize that maybe all of you are too smart to fall for crimeware, but people you know aren't and will, and a divorce lawyer is fantastic. Like, it's so just, mm, it's so fresh and crimey. I love it. And like, I want to see what's being split up. And then sometimes I'll have people say to me, well, I wouldn't click that. I'm not married. All the more reason all the more reason <laughs> to look at someone else's law, like legal agreements, yes. So I get it, you're all too smart. You're the only ones in the world that wouldn't do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through a, a quick little attack chain. Um, I really love this one. This was more eggs, if you're familiar. Does everyone know who Fin7 is? Yep. Yeah. Um, so this essentially is what I really love about some crimeware stuff at scale, is that they will customize, but they customize at scale because they use technology. I just don't see APT scaling massive hundreds of thousands and millions of attacks in a like a couple hours campaign that are all completely customized to their victim. Crimeware does that. So they attach a PDF, landing page. You go to the landing page. It's a staffing company. It tells you to download a zip file, malicious um, files inside of it that lead to more eggs, which is a downloader that Fin7 really, or Carbonac really leveraged for a long time. These modular downloaders are another super favorite of Crimeware. They love to just get anything on that machine so that they can do second stage, third stage, fourth, later stage payloads after they decide if they like you or not, right? Like, that's how ransomware operates, too. They get those downloaders on, they figure out who you are, and they decide if you're cool enough to get ransomware or if you're just getting a keylogger. In this particular case, we saw this first campaign be fully customized to these people. Every one of them, they had their name, their actual job title, where they worked, what kind of um, theater they worked at, and they customized all of these names and file names to be exactly what they are off of LinkedIn. So in this example, Raymond, who if I've protected his identity, um, his title on LinkedIn is operations manager. The title of the malicious document that he got was operationsmanager.pdf. He's been in the role for 10 months, and it was specifically customized for Dallas-Fort Worth area. Same thing for Jordan. She's a tax supervisor at a movie theater, um, and the file that she got, taxsupervisor.pdf. Same thing with Jorge here, restaurant theater manager. Have you guys been to those theaters that have their restaurants inside them? You can get drunk and eat french fries and stuff. Um, <laughs> so restaurant theater manager, he's been there four years doing that work. And that's the other thing, too, is the longer tenure someone has, the more likely they are to be looking for jobs. And if they get a job, for example, if I got a job 
my team don't listen. If I got a job in the in my email that said VP threat research and detection, I'd be like, oh really? Like I would immediately want to see that. What's going on with it? All of these people are susceptible to that, and the crime war actors know it. Plus, they can do these massive, scaled, customized lures. APT doesn't really crime war does that. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about APT versus crime war working conditions. Um, the first person I want to introduce you to. Does everybody know who this guy is? <laughs> Say it out loud. It's Hush Puppy, i.e., okay, if you're nasty. So, Hush Puppy, um, super famous, in jail, out of jail. People love him. He is a primary uh, West African Nigeria actor, does BEC and email fraud. He's got a plane, he's got a Louis Vuitton blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Same he's reading Forbes magazine. He has a, a banging Instagram. I, I mean, right? Like, that's pretty cool. Um, does anybody know who this is? This is the evil core, this Maxim. Um, yes, that's right. Um, so Maxim loves cars. The evil core guys love cars, and they love taking pictures of themselves with cars. With cars. What I love about this is a tractor in the background. <laughs> like, you're definitely in Russia, dude. Like... <laughs> Cool. Um, so evil core guys, the Maxim again, like they love to be wild. They love to wear a onesie to match their expensive rare breed Bengal cat. Do you think any APTs have pictures like this? No. All we have is sad passport pictures of those guys. <laughs> and this is what their working conditions look like. I'm pretty sure that's where the most of the like grew guys are sitting. Um, okay, so I want to do a quick run through of threats to chickens. Um, does anyone in here not eat chicken? Please leave. <laughs> so um, I want to walk you through a campaign that we saw a while ago. It's been a while, but it's absolutely one of my favorites because of all the things that it touches. First, we saw a ton of attacks um, with downloaders going after fast food. Every fast food restaurant that you can name has a drive through where you can get a three-piece meal of some kind with a burger, fries, and a Coke. They were getting hit with this, all of them, all at the same time. So the team started watching this, kind of saying, why are they going after these fast food restaurants? It doesn't make sense. It's super weird. Like, fast food restaurants, they just don't seem that lucrative, right? They don't have PII. They're just kind of processing transactions. Um, and this, I think, is a big part of it. If you go to the airport, the chip readers never work. No chip readers freaking work. And I think this threat actor was focused on that fact that so many chip readers are broken that people are swiping even when they shouldn't be. The way that you do a credit card transaction for a swipe versus a tap versus a, a chip is completely different. If you're swiping, you are so vulnerable. And this threat actor knew that because they specialize in credit card. I'm going to give um, foreshadowing so you guys can try and figure out who the actor is. Um, so so they, they were hitting fast food pretty hard, and then things changed. They started going after a restaurant that sells burgers and fries, but they also sell hot dogs. And I learned this because I was in my team chat one day, and I kind of said, hey, what's with, the, what's with hitting this, this fast food restaurant? And one of the guys on the team said, sure, it's Wednesday. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm a manager. What does that mean? It's Wednesday. <laughs> and he said, it's 99 cent hot dog day. <laughs> and I was like, OK, why do you know that? I... And he said, well, this fast food restaurant has a 99 cent special Monday through Friday. Sometimes it's a burger. Sometimes it's a shake. Sometimes it's hot dog. And Wednesdays are always 99 cent hot dog day. And this actor always hits this fast food restaurant on 99 cent hot dog Wednesdays. <laughs> and I said, wow, being a threat researcher, your brain is full of a lot of information <laughs> that my brain doesn't want. <laughs> so please write a report. Um, so yeah, he was like, yeah, I don't know. They, they, they quit with the burgers and fries places. And now they're focusing on just this one fast food restaurant and only on hot dog day said, okay, that's weird. He also told me that he had tracked down the most attacked stores for that fast food restaurant and found all of their owners on Facebook, my threat researcher. And I said, what are you doing with that? He said, well, they're hitting this one um, franchise where she just bought the franchise and she's talking about it a lot on Facebook. It's brand new. She just bought it. She spent like $300,000 getting the franchise. I was like, okay, so he's tracking the owners 
on Facebook, which also means, and this is the number one thing to remember, if we can do it, the freaking crime where actors can do it, like they spend all day doing it. So the thing to remember, I think, with all attack chains or any of that is that there's so much going on outside of what we see, and we're just constantly trying to fill in those gaps. So then they popped off of 99 cent hot dog place and they started hitting chicken. Any restaurant that you can imagine that's fast food that has the word chicken, there's a lot of them, right? There's one from a particular state. There's one from Atlanta where I'm from. There's one from New Orleans. Like there's a lot of chicken restaurants and they started hitting only chicken specializing fast food. <laughs> and I'm like, it is so, what is going on? They are hammering these chicken fast food restaurants. Then they started hitting chickens themselves. <laughs> they started going after poultry restaurants. Does anyone know the poultry capital of the world? It's Gainesville, Georgia. That's right. So that's like an hour away from where I live. Gainesville, Georgia. Oh, Brian, you, knew, you live in Atlanta too. So they started hitting six poultry producers in Gainesville, Georgia. And I said to my researcher, your head's full of a bunch of stuff that's irrelevant and weird. Mine is too. <laughs> And now it's useful. I know that there's a ton of poultry places up in Gainesville. This is really weird. And he's like, they quit the hot dog. They quit the fast food places. They quit the chicken sandwich places. They're hitting poultry so hard. And this was taking place over campaigns over two or three weeks. This wasn't like a months and months and months thing. But they hammered the poultry farms for like two months. And they kept going at them and going at them and going at them. And so we worked with some of these poultry farms. And we're like, what do you think of this? They were the suppliers to all of those chicken restaurants. Every single one of those chicken restaurants bought exclusively from those poultry producers in Georgia. Still doesn't make sense. I still don't understand. So then, does anyone know what a VAR is? If, you, if you're old and you worked in early IT, you know what a VAR is. It's a value-added reseller that sells products, and then they sell services to go with those products at a markup. This actor immediately pivoted and started hitting one VAR. One VAR. Hey, chicken farms, do you guys know this VAR? Yeah, that's where we get all our IT stuff from. Okay. So we worked with this VAR, and they, their main product is a remote access IT support tool. And they pre-install it on all of their hardware so that they can remote in when they, the customer purchases the package of hardware and support. And... I know there's a lot of APT people in here. <laughs> this is cooler than what a lot of APTs know. Um, and so they found out that essentially this threat actor had decided that going after these credit card machines and credit card data was too slow. The credit card transactions were too small. Let's go up the chain. Let's go to the big chicken suppliers, meaning hey, when they do an invoice for $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 worth of chicken, we're going to get in between that transaction and take that money. Hey, you know what? Let's go further up the chain. Let's actually get into the IT systems that are being dropped at these large poultry producers so that we can steal all of their intake and their outtake. And they put a back door on all of those systems that the IT VAR was sending out, not just to the poultry producers, right? So they narrow, 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 boom, out, out, out into all of the other customers of this bar. And so what we have here is one of the most dangerous, horrifying, fast food to IT pipelines that you could ever imagine. And that essentially is why I just really love Crimeware. I think they're so creative. I think they have just such a fast and loose, do not care sort of attitude where all that really matters is money. And when you have the motivation in your pocket of that actor, you can follow up on them a lot more quickly. So the final thing I want to add, um, as I started, we glorify defenders. That is the most important thing to me about any presentation I ever see is that you are the important people. The defenders are the ones that are the stars that are on the front line. These threat actors have pictures of them with a Louis Vuitton blanket, but how many people did they hurt to get that? Like, they're not good people. It's funny, but we don't want to be like them. We want to be defenders. And so... Um, this is a, um, a backdoor from a PDF. Um, when you click on the link, it takes you to download it. Dear colleagues, please find the OSINT dashboard for week 22. It claims to come from the European um, Banking Federation. And essentially, this was targeted toward people that have admins, systems administrator, IT, and security in their titles on LinkedIn. 
they're coming after all of us as defenders. The crime where actors know who you are and they look for elevated access just like they did with that VAR. They want to get further up the chain. If you have higher privileges than your user base, which most of you probably do, you're absolutely on their radar in a way that is super creative and they have no consequences. They're not going to get an international federal indictment of some kind. These crime war actors are gonna hang in Eastern Europe and Russia and be totally cool and come after me and you. So that's it, crime war. Mm -hmm. <laughs>